What's up guys, welcome to a rainy episode. Finally, right? So, it's monsoon season in New Mexico and we're getting a lot of rain and my backyard has turned from a desert into a jungle. It's fantastic. I've got my chocolate Earl Grey tea and I have a question. So, not a question for you guys, a question from you guys. Um, so, if you follow my channel then you probably know that if you leave a comment on my videos and it's like a good comment or you know anything meaningful it's not like spam or something there's a really good chance that I'm gonna answer it um, and I, I spend a lot of time replying and sometimes I leave uh, kind of long replies so I figured that um, maybe I should just start filming those and these some of these questions I think are relevant to a lot of people because um, I get asked them a lot so today I'm going to answer a question and let's just jump right into it. The question is from, um, I don't know your name, but uh, I'm pretty sure you're a follower of my channel, uh, MH on the YouTube comments. And he says, I'm assuming he could be a she. This person says, uh, this is in regards to my 100 to 500 review that I just did a little bit ago. The question is, uh, I've got the RP and the 800 millimeter. Um, parentheses, one of your videos helped me make that choice, so that's awesome. Glad I can help. Uh, love the combo. Would like to see a direct comparison between these two lenses. I'll get into that in a minute. For me, the question is whether, whether to spend $2,000 plus on the lens or on an R5 slash R6 versus my RP. Any thoughts? Yeah, I've got thoughts. <laughs> so this, let's see, uh, this is what we're working with here. This is the RP with the 800. So I will say right off the bat, <laughs> this is the lightest wildlife, like the lightest high quality wildlife combo uh in existence like this is insane and i say high quality I, that, that's a relative term <sighs> full frame mirrorless 800 millimeter prime they both have their drawbacks i'm going to talk about those but the fact that i can hand hold this 800 with zero issues all day long uh, it's just amazing all right so this is what they're working with, um, RP and the 800, wanting to know if they should upgrade to... Okay, what do we got here? Uh, this is my R5. My R6 is filming me right now, so that's one of the choices. Or this lens, which is, which is my favorite lens of all time. I absolutely love this lens, if that wasn't clear from my review or any of the other videos that I've done over the past six months or so with this. Um, this is my favorite lens of all time. For me personally, let me get that straight because you are not me, I'm not you. We all have totally different things, but for me personally, the way I shoot, the things I shoot, uh, this, is, this is my go-to lens, number one, all time. If I can only have one lens, it would be that lens. However, if you haven't seen the review on that lens and you wanna know more, you can check it out. But like I said in that review, there is a huge difference between good versus good for you. And what I mean by that is this lens is technically superior to this 800 and to just about any other lens in that category of super zooms. Um, Technically, it's superior, but that price, man, that really, that really makes, that, that brings a lot of hesitance, and uh, that's the whole good versus good for you, because if that price is too painful, then it may not be good for you, and there may be other options that are 90 plus percent as good as this, but half the price or something. So, anyways, this brings up the age-old debate, and this is why I'm doing this, is 
I get this question a lot, and that is, should I upgrade my body or my lens for wildlife? And we're gonna talk specifically about wildlife. I've done videos about this question in the past. I will say, let me start off by saying that generally, for most types of photography, I will say, uh, and, and still partly in wildlife, I will say that lenses are generally a better idea investment and uh, just overall better to upgrade before your bodies. And I say that because for one, lenses, uh, they hold their value much more than a camera body does and for much longer than a camera body does. And for two, most camera bodies these days, when it comes to image quality alone, like even if it's an APS-C sensor or, you know, the in this case, this is the RP and it's the lowest on the list in terms of price and quality from Canon's full frame mirrorless. Um, that being said, most sensors, including this RP, are actually quite amazing. And I, I harp on this a lot on my channel and it, it, it's all about physics. So understanding, a basic understanding of physics really helps you, uh, especially in this case, because when light enters your camera, the first way that it's entering your camera is through a lens. So, you know, the better the glass in here, the better the image that's going to hit this sensor that the sensor is going to be able to work with. So it's not gonna do you any good to have my R5 with you know a, a kit lens on there that's just complete garbage uh, or just a bad bad optic lens, you know, that that's my point. Um, but it, it's just not like in regards to this question though, then there's some gray areas. So that's the reason to always have nice lenses. In, in this case, the question is, he's already got this set up. So he's already got a decent body and he's already got a decent lens. This is where it gets tricky and I can't tell you what to do because I don't know you. Um, I can only tell you my thoughts on what you should think about and I'm gonna give you some, some things to think about so like I said, generally, I side with upgrade your lenses first. You know, that's always good advice to follow. However, let's talk about the exception to that rule. In this case, that's wildlife. So if you are primarily a wildlife photographer, autofocus to me is like one of the, if not the most important aspects that I look at when I'm investing in a camera body. And there is no comparison. I, I have said before, I've made a lot of videos on the RP, about the RP, with the RP. I love it to death. For what it is, it's amazing. You know, under $1,000 for full frame mirrorless, you can't beat that. However, the autofocus in the RP is not only first gen, uh, but it is in no way, shape, or form in the same league at all as to the R5 or the R6 that's filming me. And I've made videos about that. I've made videos about how to set up the R5 and the R6 for their, auto, you know, to get the most out of their autofocus systems. I've made videos comparing the R5 and the R6 uh, with wildlife in regards to wildlife. So you can check those out for more detailed stuff. But just for the purpose of this question and this uh, video, the R5 and the R6 are leaps and bounds better. They're so much better to me that when I upgraded from my 1DX2 and my 5D Mark IV, the autofocus, and, and the autofocus in those two cameras was good. The autofocus in those two cameras was better than the RP for wildlife. When I upgraded to the R5 and the R6 from those two, it was no comparison. As good as they were, the R5 and the R6, especially once I got them set up right, blows everything I've ever had out of the water. That alone for me, for me personally, that alone was worth the upgrade. There's a ton of other advantages that I have since really enjoyed, uh, you know, including the megapixels, the EVF, all kinds of stuff that go along with the mirrorless and just the upgrade in general. 
but the autofocus alone was worth it to me. So here is what I tell you. Think about, there's pros and cons. If you, if you only have enough money to get either the new lens or the new camera body, given this specific situation coming from an RP and an 800, it's tough. I'm gonna give you my dilemma here. So, like I said, autofocus is like the most important thing. Like, you know, you, you may have a good setup here with this 800 and the RP, uh, but if you miss focus, you miss focus and you've missed that opportunity. That possibility of you missing focus will exponentially decrease if you upgrade to an R6. That's, I, I, I'm, the reason why I say R6 first is because you said around $2,000 you are not getting an R5 for that price. So unless you're willing to really up it to the 3,500 or whatever the, R, the R5 is, I would, I would go with the R6. So I would just discount the R5 completely unless you really think that's an option for you. However, the R5 and the R6 both have the exact same autofocusing system and they are, for stills purposes, other than the 45 megapixels, they are very, very much the same camera. So, so that's what I say. Think about how much the autofocus alone could benefit you. Um, that's the biggest thing for me with going from the RP to the R6. On the other hand, you have an 800 millimeter. This is a prime lens. It's quite sharp. Uh, I've done a lot of videos with it. I've done a very, very extensive review about it. I like it. I bought it, obviously. Uh, it has its drawbacks. For me, it's not weather sealed. Um, it's only f11, which really sucks. And the autofocus on this lens is subpar compared to this lens. So when we look at both of these together, the 1 to 500 is definitely superior. Like I said, it's superior in just about every single way except for reach uh, and price and weight. Those three things the 800 has on it. My point is the 800 is a very niche lens. It, you know, it's, it's for wildlife, but even within wildlife, it's really only for certain types of wildlife in certain conditions. You know, I, I have a really hard time personally using the 800 in subpar conditions. So in forests, I struggle a lot with it. Uh, things like that with, you know, small flappy birds and birds in flight. I have, don't get me wrong, I've gotten some great shots in all of those conditions. Uh, and that's where the skill and the patience and the practice and all of that uh, come into play. But just overall ease of use, you know, the 1 to 500 is better. And the 1 to 500 is obviously a zoom, so you have a lot of options for not only for wildlife uh, but for landscape as well. Um, I absolutely love the 1 to 500 for landscape and pseudo macro stuff and portraits, even um, just all kinds of stuff. It's a much more versatile lens. But that price, that you know, that if you here's here's the other dilemma: if you take the 1 to 5 and you put it on the RP, you will have an amazing combo. It will be more versatile than the 800. It will be sharper than the 800. It will be faster autofocusing than the 800. It will be weather sealed, unlike the 800. Um, it's got just all of these things going for it. But then you've got two problems. You've got the price, and then you've got the RP as your autofocus system. So just like I said before, the lens is great. And you put that lens on here though, if you miss it because of the autofocus, then you've missed it, you know? So that's where, I mean, obviously, ideally, everybody wants the best of the best. They want the one to five with the R6 or the R5 or whatever, you know? but. I realize it's just not possible for everybody. And I mean, it wasn't possible for me either. I mean, I'm a professional, I do this for a living, but you know, um, I've got a life, I've got a family, I've got bills, I've got everything else, I've got a pandemic, you know, so I was affected too. And it took me personally a long time, much longer than I wanted to save up for that R to five. I mean, for that 100 to 500. 
but I will posit this too, the 800 on the R6 or the R5, I use it a lot, it's amazing, especially when you get in the right light, uh, in the right conditions, this 800, especially on that R5, R6 uh, autofocus system is absolutely fantastic. So your dilemma is that I can't answer for you, but that I can bring to your attention is, do you want the better autofocusing system, slightly better dynamic range, um, and the, the, the upgrades that come with the camera body and your 800, which will pair nicely with either one of those camera bodies, or do you wanna start out with the better lens to give you more options? It's gonna be faster, it's gonna be weather sealed, uh, your ISOs are going to be lower, and all of that's going to go a long way to help out your RP get even better images at the expense of a little bit of reach. So that's a super tough choice, and I don't, you know, I don't know the. Oh, the other thing is one more thing that the, the, the one to five's got going for it uh, that the 800 is severely has. This bothers me about the 800, and of course it's physics. There's nothing I can do about it, so I don't get super mad, but. It is what it is. 20 feet minimum focus distance for the 800, you know, uh, like 3.2 feet or something with the 1 to 500. So, I mean, that's just stupid, you know. That is just, that's a huge difference. So I'll say this about my own personal use too. Um, I've done a lot of videos with the 800 and I've gotten, again, some amazing, some of my favorite shots, you know, of waterfowl and birds and stuff with the 800 but since i've had the 1 to 500 i found that basically i almost never grab the 800 anymore um the only time i think that i'll take the 800 over the 1 to 5 is again in perfect lighting conditions nice bright mornings and uh like on the lake on the ocean side shore birds uh, seabirds that kind of stuff um, I'm probably going to reach for the 800 first, you know, and it's still something that the R5, that the 1 to 500 will still be able to handle with a bit of cropping. But, you know, um, that, that's the only situation where I personally am going to go for the 800 first. So I'm sorry I couldn't give you a direct answer by saying, oh, you should absolutely get this, but it just doesn't work that way, you know. I just, I hope that I gave you something to think about and some things that are important to consider in wildlife photography, you know, the autofocus system versus the versatility and image quality of a lens. But if you still have questions about this stuff, leave them in the comments below and I'll definitely continue the conversation down there. I'm pretty sure this has already gotten quite long. Uh, it's turned into more of like a video style podcast. So maybe I'll do these more often. If you, if you like this stuff, if you like this format and you wanna see or hear more of this type of stuff from me answering you guys' questions, leave those in the comments below and let me know. Uh, if you made it this far, I super appreciate it. And hit that like button for me because that's the best way you can help me out. I super appreciate it. Uh, you can also help me out by uh, checking out my preset packs and my workshops, wildlife, landscape, photography workshops, all the goods. Uh, you can sign up for my newsletter and come learn with me from me in the field. Uh, get some hands-on stuff. That's it. That's all the plugs I want to say. I want to thank you guys again for watching. I really appreciate it. But now it's second breakfast time. So I'll see you in the next one.